Hey, Joe Gilder here from Home Studio Corner. I want to show you quickly how to set up a headphone mix inside of Studio One if you should find yourself wanting to do that. So what is a headphone mix? It's a mix <laughs> for people wearing headphones uh, when you're recording someone. Uh, so you are running Studio One, you've got someone else recording, and they maybe want their own mix. Now, the, the easy answer to this, most home studios, I think you can get away with not doing a headphone mix, meaning just you listen to what they're listening to, right? Now, if you want to, to listen to something different, for example, you want to listen to just the vocal by itself uh, without muting all the instruments for the vocalist while he or she is singing, then yes, you'll need to ha be able to send them their own mix that you, when you mess around with faders, that it's not messing up their mix, okay? So that's kind of one example. Or if you have multiple musicians and they each want to have their own blend, the drummer wants more drums, the bass player wants more bass, or if you want to listen in the mix position and not have to hear the click, for example. You want them to hear the click, and you don't want to hear that. I'll talk about the click in a future video, by the way. A couple cool tricks there. Uh, but for setting up a headphone mix, the first thing I would suggest is if your audio interface has some sort of a mixing control inside it, I would recommend doing that. So for example, I use the PreSonus Studio Live Mixer. So here is kind of a virtual representation of that mixer. And what I do when I have musicians over to record, they get their own mix off of the board itself. And I do that using auxiliary sends. So for example, Aux 1 and 2 is one of my headphone mixes. They are stereo. And I can then, on my board, I can select, I can press the button to control the mix and I control how much of each of the channels is being sent. So just like if you're doing a headphone mix or a, a uh, stage monitor mix and a live show, same deal here. I'm just sending them doing my own mix on the board on that aux channel, if that makes sense. So if you have, you know, even if you, if you don't have a mixer, but you've got something like a, a PreSonus, um, one of their audio box boxes, that has its own software for built-in routing. The reason that's there, and things like uh, Universal Audio, uh, Focusrite, most audio interfaces have some form of that. The reason is it allows you to mix the signals on the box itself without bringing it through your computer. Once you run it through your computer, you start to have to deal with latency issues. Now, if you've got a really fast computer and you can run with a very low buffer setting, meaning you don't really hear the latency as you're recording, then great. Then you'll want to just do your mixes within Studio One. So just to refresh your memory, if you go to Preferences, Audio Setup, here's where you change your buffer size. It's called Device Block Size. And you can see it actually gives you your input latency. So right now at 512 samples, the input latency is uh, 26 milliseconds. So that's a long time. If I'm playing guitar, that's going to sound like I'm playing out of time. So I've got to drop this down to 128 at the lowest or at the highest higher end. If your computer can handle 64 or 32, that will help. Now you can see it gets down to around 5 milliseconds. That's doable. Okay. So the idea is how, long, how fast or how long does it take for your computer to take the audio, run it through Studio One, and run it back out your audio interface so someone can listen to it. Okay, so if you're going to set up a headphone mix this way, it's actually really, really easy. You can do this a number of ways. If you like to do your mixing, oh, that's no good. <laughs> I mess with the buffer settings too much. I've got about eight programs running right now to record this video. So, <laughs> but I'm not going to edit that out because darn it, this is the real world. I will say, um, went to a studio with Pro Tools the other day and it did that many times. It was... It wasn't awesome, but it was kind of awesome. Anyway, so back over here in the mix window. So the way we want to do a uh, headphone mix, the easiest way is to use the sends section uh, that we talked about in a previous video. In a mixing setup, we're using sends, for example, to send this guitar to a quarter note delay, which is located over here. Uh, but you can also use the sends to send a copy of this signal or a group group of signals out and an actual physical output on your audio interface and then that physical output or pair of outputs if it's stereo can then feed a headphone amp which you can then feed to your musician okay so the easiest there, there's a lot of ways to do it the one way that i would start if you don't want to be you don't want to spend a ton of time setting it up is if you set up your sessions like i do where you've got these master buses here i would you just use sends from here so I would create a send on my drums bus, and I would send it out, uh, for example, let's say this is this channel 3 and 4 on my audio interface. We're going to say that's my headphone output, okay? So now I've got it going to channel 3 and 4. 
and you can do pre or post fader. Typically for a headphone mix, you're going to do post fader. And then this lets me adjust how much of the overall drum mix the person is getting. And then what's great about Studio One, I can just click and drag, and this will copy it over to every bus in the session. Now, I can pretty quickly and easily set up their mix based on these buses. And we probably want to send like the reverb to them as well. So now I can say, okay, what do you need more or less of? And they say, less bass, less electrics, more vocal, and uh, less background vocals or something like that. Now, they're listening to this here. So if I come in here and I want to... You know, I, don't, I want more bass. I want to turn the bass up in my mix. Well, guess what? That doesn't affect what they're hearing because we're sending a pre-fader send out to channels 3 and 4, which is feeding their headphones. Another thing you might want to do is actually create a bus. So we'll just um, we'll add a bus channel. And we can... Actually, no, I'm sorry. This is, there's a different way to do this. Let's remove that. You can come over here on the left-hand side. I haven't talked about these because I hardly ever use them. But if you want to see your output channels... Visually, click on that outputs, and you'll notice a new window comes up. In this current session, I only have one set of outputs other than my main outputs set up, and that's channels 3 and 4. So I can come over here to channels 3 and 4, and if I want to adjust the overall headphone level, let's say I'm just sending everything's too hot, rather than coming back over here and turning all of these down, which would just take more time, I can come over here, and I can just pull down the fader. That's, that's changing the overall level of what's going out, outputs 3 and 4. I can also, if I want to be super crazy, I can put effects and things right here on this channel, like a limiter or something like that. I wouldn't recommend it because that can add more latency to the, to the signal, which you, you're trying to minimize latency in this regard. So wouldn't do that, but you have that option and that possibility there. So that's the easiest way. The problem with this is if you're recording them and they want to hear more kick drum, well, you can't send them more kick drum without you also hearing more kick drum. So if I go turn up the kick over here, and I come back, that's turning up, what they're hearing is a stereo mix of my entire drums as I have them mixed. So this is an efficient way to work, but it's not super duper custom. So if they want more kick drum, one thing to do is either just turn it up and you're going to listen to more kick drum as well, and they can just deal with it. Or you can actually come over here and put a ascend on the kick drum itself and turn it up a little bit more for them. So you're sending basically two kick drums to them. On the flip side, if they want less of something, for example, they want less snare, there's no way to really take snare out. You know what I mean? You can't really take it out of their mix without just taking it down in your mix by itself. Okay? So yes, you theoretically could take, do something like this and literally create a massive headphone mix with every single piece of your mix in there but I don't like to do that because typically they just want a drum mix right at my church when we do sound on Sunday mornings we don't get a separate channel on our little avium for kick snare hi-hat all that we just get a drum mix and everybody including the drummer gets the same uh, basic mix of the drums and we'll all say drummer will say can we get more kick drum is that okay with everybody everybody says sure that's fine but then the actual drum mix the ratio of kick to snare to overheads is the same for everyone we just all have individual control of how much of the drums we want so I would set up your sessions this way I would think 90% of the time this will be adequate for whatever you're trying to do uh, and you also can do this for your reverbs and things like that to send them to them now what makes this really fun is let's say we're recording vocals okay and she's over there just singing her heart out right sounds great um, but we want to hear just the vocal by itself maybe she's warming up and we want to play with the EQ or compression settings on our channel strip like the ADL 700 that I have here well to do that we want her to hear the music but we want to uh, just hear her now if we just select if we just solo her voice we'll watch what happens I'm gonna hit play and watch the meters you'll notice that her voice is soloed for us um, but check out what's coming into channels three and four if we could listen to that, actually, I've got it on my board. Let me pull it up. Oh, hang on, i got to press a button here now. So guess what? We soloed her vocal for us, but it's also soloing it in that channel. Why? These are all pre-fader, except the mute mutes everything. So when we click solo on something, guess what? It gets muted. So we don't want that to happen. So the easiest way to do this during a mix session uh, is to, uh, let me see something real quick. So if I mute something on my board, it also gets muted in that send because it's pre-fader, but it's post-mute, okay? So if we want to just listen to her voice without us having to listen to everything else, we got to do something like this. 
we got to go grab all the other faders and turn them down. So now she still has the same mix. Again, I'll hit play. Oh, let's go over here. Feel it in the wind. Change is coming. She says, can I get some more drums? And I say, well, of course. Feel it in the wind. Change is coming. I can, can I get some more bass? Sure. Feel it in the wind. But guess what? When I listen to my mix over here, uh, what I'm hearing is just this. Feel it in the wind. Change is coming. And I can listen to her, I can say, yeah, it's a little muddy, I'm going to mess with the EQ on my channel strip or something like that. And she's still hearing everything else. And when I say, you know what, that's great, let's go back and I want to hear everything in there, I just grab the faders. What's great about Studio One, I can click the first one, hold down shift, click the last one, and just drag them up, and I can hear everything together. Feel it in the wind, change is coming, I can see it in my dream. Okay, so that's, in essence, the way that I would do, and the way I do do, <laughs> headphone mixes in Studio One. You can take that and modify that however you like, but I like to keep it simple. Buses are there for a reason. They're supposed to make your life easier. So if they're not making your life easier, something's wrong. So make your life easier. Do headphone mixes the easy way, um, and I think your life will be better because of it. <laughs> okay, I'm Joe from homestudiocorner.com slash presonus. Head over there to see all the free Studio One videos that I have for you. And if you want to poke around the rest of Home Studio Corner as well, there's lots of good stuff there waiting for you. See you in the next video. Thanks. Thanks.